No. No. What? 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 What are you? Chaos. <sighs> Another nightmare. Yeah. It's not like I'm trying to have them, you know. I don't know if you've realized, but I've had to spend night after night trying to activate powers that I'm not even sure I have while almost injuring myself every time and the cause of all that was me getting eaten alive and coming back to life, which isn't exactly something people can adjust to. As if you know how that feels. I'm very well aware of what it's like being eaten alive, you twit. Sorry. I don't have the fondest memories of my home being completely wiped from existence and being the sole survivor for almost 20 years now, but no, I don't know what it's like. Sorry. Anyways, why are you not sure about your powers? Look, it's like Computer said, there might be some exceptions to whatever rules there are. Like, you said my powers are only strong at night or certain nights or something. Well, what if they only activate during the day, or not at all? I could have just been revived with no powers at all. If Computer's claim is true, me getting powers isn't a guarantee. All of this doesn't change the fact that you're keeping us up with this. <sighs> it's morning now. But it's not just that. I saw something else. Something else? Eyes. Shining purple eyes belonging to some figure that pierced through darkness. I think I know what it is you're dreaming about. When a void bites you, a soul is injected into your body, and that's what gives an in-birth their powers. This is just an assumption, mainly because no one else has had this kind of thing, but you might be seeing that soul. Wait, there's another soul inside of my body? Yep. And you didn't mention that for weeks because... At least I didn't wait as long as you did to talk about stuff. He's got you there. <laughs> Since this has come up, I guess it's time for a bit of a lesson on everything. This is gonna be complicated. I said before that the heart is a person's essence. Well, that's just a part of it. The soul is one aspect that carries the development of the brain and heart and are bound to existence within our bodies or vessels. Normally, people have one soul within a body. So, what's with the brain and heart development stuff? Well... Uh... I did give that dimension device a phone, too. <laughs> I'll, uh... go deal with that. Who is this? Wait, what? How did he even... Uh, I'll be right over. So! Uh, some guy named Dave just called me. He says an old friend of mine is stuck in a dimension somewhere, so I'm gonna go handle that. <laughs> well, that happened. Lilo and Stitch a Disney movie about a genetically created alien named Experiment 626 that was made to only destroy. However, he learns alongside a Hawaiian girl about being misfits and finding your own family and what it means to be a family. This was a really cool and charming movie that is easily rewatchable for anyone and also gave a little bit of view for Hawaiian culture as well. By the way, looking at this movie's history, it could have been a lot darker and I'm kinda glad it wasn't. Anyways, the movie got really good reception, leading to the series having representation within the Kingdom Hearts series years later, and also having three tie-in games for the first movie. Three of them, right next to each other. Ignoring the smart idea that that was, today I'll be looking at the Lilo and Stitch video game, which was the first one to release before the movie came out. Lilo 
Lilo and Stitch are relaxing on the beach when Lilo is kidnapped by an alien bounty hunter and placed into a spaceship laboratory owned by Dr. Pestis, the main villain. He, she, they, it, not sure which, is a robot mosquito who wants to genetically turn mosquitoes into... mech -itos. Goodness, this makes my puns look good. Regardless, Stitch must set out to save her before she becomes food for the Mosquito Army. Now first, I should point out that this takes place after the first movie, given how Stitch speaks English somewhat well and that he isn't trying to destroy anything at the beginning of the game. As for the original story approach, at first it probably seems a little strange to use Mosquitoes as the main villain, but in the movie they actually had Mosquitoes as a running gag throughout the movie, so seeing that gag being put into a story is actually funny when you realize the context. Though Stitch trying to save Lilo is pretty typical, so it's about what you would expect from a Lilo and Stitch game story-wise. Graphically, this game is pretty dang good. Sprite work and animations are very well detailed and the backgrounds are very colorful and diverse, which I'm glad about since we go to outer space and other planets. These look quite amazing, especially given that this game was released in the first year of the Game Boy Advance's release. I mean, it was just under a year, but regardless, it's still really good for its time, which kind of makes me wonder why the Ice Age 1 game only looks subpar. The only complaint I have is that the final boss going off screen doesn't actually go off screen and just poofs out of existence for a second. That little detail can sometimes break immersion, but luckily nothing else in the game actually does that. The images for cutscenes look pretty good too, again having a great amount of color in them. There is one big issue though. The game actually promotes the fact that it has movie clips within the game, however, they are horribly pixelated and the audio is way worse compared to the original movie. They are also very short, making them not really worth it, and you might as well just watch the actual movie. And I guess this game is trying to get people to actually go see it, but at the same time, this quality does not really help to make me want to go watch it. The music though is really good and actually decent in length too. The only track in the game I wish was better was the first level. Since this is supposed to be a shoot 'em up, you'd expect a little more of an action like track, especially given every other song used for levels in the game. It's not a major complaint, I just feel like they could have done a little bit better with that track, but that's just a personal thing. There are three different types of gameplay, Stitch, Lilo, and Spaceship levels. Stitch levels take up the majority of the game where he uses his guns and takes down enemies that stand in his way. He's also able to pick up large objects like destroyed helicopters and boxes and throw them. An alternative weapon he can throw is an explosive pineapple that does a lot of damage but comes in limited amounts, so he has to collect more of them. I know pineapple is a major thing in Hawaii, but them exploding is still questionable. Then again, Stitch is smarter than a supercomputer, so he probably just figured out a way to make them explosive. As he progresses, he can collect a pickup, which makes his gun bullets do significantly more damage and go through walls and floors for a limited amount of shots. Occasionally, the game will allow Stitch to use a vehicle of some kind to cause destruction. Lilo levels are stealth oriented. She needs to avoid enemies to pull switches and press buttons with her face in order to open passageways. She can get past enemies by going into tubes, sneaking past sleeping guards, and disguising herself as a bundle of grass. Somehow. She is made out in the movie to be a little weird, so her carrying around a bunch of grass is too far out of reach, but the fact that no alien sees a problem with this definitely stretches that. She can also swing her doll around as an attack. Both of these gameplay types have similarities though. The two characters have 4 hit points worth of damage, before losing a life. Refilling health requires either getting red health boxes, which refills 2 hits, or blue health boxes, which give back all of your health. There are also lives scattered around in areas to collect. Most of these levels have photos that can be collected, which give special images that you can view. And finally, the spaceship levels have Stitch shooting asteroids and enemy ships in a tube-like space area and avoid… whatever these things are. For these levels, you can get green packs to restore the health of the ship. Stitch's shooting is pretty cool to do more often than not. The upgrade of increased damage and the ability to shoot through walls is extremely useful, and didn't feel broken because there was a limited amount of shots for those and you'd also lose the power up if you died. 
Using downward shooting while in the air to have Stitch stay in the air longer is really cool to do, and is also needed in order to get some collectibles. Aside from that though, I was kind of expecting a little bit more with Stitch's gunplay which I'll go more into later. Also, while the vehicles were really cool to use, you didn't get to use them very often considering how short this game is. You really only use them once or twice throughout the entire game, which leaves a bit to be desired when it comes to the alien machinery aspect of Lilo and Stitch. But then again, the vehicles were really good to use, so maybe having a bunch of those around would cause the game to be a lot easier than I would want it to be. Also having photos as a collectible to get, very nice touch. This game is more difficult than it should be and is for more bad reasons than you think. Starting off with a common thing throughout the entire game, there are little to no invincibility frames when you get hit by something, making some attacks that is only supposed to do half a health bar worth of damage end up pretty much one-shotting you. And there are already moves in the game that actually do one-shot you, for some reason. Some hitboxes also make no sense as they are either really small or don't even seem like they are actually attached to an enemy. Also, being right next to enemies make it really hard to shoot them, since both an enemy and the player can overlap each other preventing either side from taking damage. And when you're surrounded by a bunch of enemies, you're basically in a complete disadvantage as someone will always be shooting at you. Some enemy attacks are also really fast and can come from off screen making them almost impossible to dodge in time. Huge shout out to the final boss that ends up having gigantic attacks that are super fast within the last third of the fight that can one shot you and you need to make very precise movements to even do damage to the boss. There are also no health upgrades at all to help with any of these problems, so you'll have to try and deal with all these problems no matter what. Stitch isn't able to shoot while crouching or crawling. This doesn't really make any sense as to why he can't, especially when there are machines that allow him to be able to do this, and it would help make some parts of the game a little easier. Same thing for him not being able to aim diagonally downward, especially when there is a boss that is only aerial combat, and in order to aim diagonally while on the ground, you have to run forward and you're not able to hold still and adjust your aim. This could have been done with the L button since to my knowledge that button doesn't do anything. Lilo's levels have no checkpoints in any of them, so if you get caught at all and die, you're guaranteed to have to redo the entire level, and they aren't exactly short. This is if you die at all, not even for getting a game over. It's a good thing I have the ability to work around the problem, however, most people wouldn't have that luxury of the workaround that I had. By the way, her attack does basically nothing to most enemies, and the ones it does damage will more than likely result in her getting hit too, so there's that as well. Nothing in the game explains how to do certain actions that are mandatory to get through the game, like sneaking around or putting your ship on top of the screen. Now, there's a manual for this game, and I'm not really sure if this actually has the controls in it, but regardless, people shouldn't be forced to read these things. I honestly really hate it when games make people do that. Oh, and on top of all that, the game saves with the password system, so you also have to work around that if you want to go back to any particular level. Considering that this game is rated E for everyone, the difficulty should be toned down a bit as otherwise, players will end up being more infuriated playing the game than anything else. The spaceship levels are honestly just... okay. While playing through them, I just felt like I was just doing stuff and it worked. Not to mention that the controls throw you around when you need to make precise movements. Even then, it's not like it felt really challenging. In fact, these were the easiest levels in the game, and there's not many of them either. I guess that's the main reasons why I don't mind them, because these levels were almost free to complete and I needed them after some levels. This game is pretty good in concept, but in execution there are some things that make this game more frustrating than it should be. That's honestly what brings this game down by a lot, how difficult it is. And I'm not saying that a difficult game is automatically a bad one, but when the reasons for it being hard are more because of problematic design choices, then I have gripes with it. It's a big shame too, because presentation wise, this game is amazing and the story is simple enough to work well with everything else. Unfortunately, since this is a video game, the gameplay comes first for me, and a large amount of that is met with infuriating levels that make the whole experience much more of a pain than it should have been. Alright, so that's dealt with. I should probably head back to Chaos and Computer.
Actually, I don't really need to. It's not really urgent that I go back. Besides, they've kept plenty of stuff for me. They don't tell me I have a phone in my dimensional navigator. They don't tell me there's another soul in my body. They don't tell me that there's way more to a person, which puts us incredibly behind schedule. Why shouldn't I be told things? I have to find all these things out by myself. I mean, I don't have any reason to not go and explore. To actually have something to tell to others instead of constantly having things kept from me and talking down to me like I'm some child and never being able to come back with nothing more than a question or some kind of theory. <sighs> Maybe I should talk to someone. A friend that gets me. I mean, since I visited one friend, I might as well go to another. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Calling myself a friend. What's going on my fellow residents, it's me to Frozen Cavern, and thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. Now, if you guys have been here for a while now, you would notice that my last video was about a month ago. So, uh, sorry about that, but that's mainly because college, college has been killing me as of lately. And there's been a lot more work that I've had to put into it than the last year that I've had, which ends up making things a lot more stressful. I just need to find the mindset of being able to do all of this extra college work as well as, you know, maintaining the YouTube channel as well. So don't worry, I have not stopped making videos, it's just that college has been keeping me from being able to do that. Now a good amount of you probably don't realize, but for the lore part of this video, the event that I'm actually like somewhat glossing over is actually a video that is a friend of mine's, that particular friend being Phantom Brawler. I ended up helping him out with that video, so if you guys want a little bit more context into what exactly happened, then go over to the video that I will link in the description, and also in the outro of this video. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more, as well as share this video out with your friends and family, but until the next video, take care.